Welcome to today's tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to make this water splash in Blender. Let's get started. I will use the can that we modeled in the previous video, link in the description. First, let's add the source of the simulation. Add a plane, then go into edit mode and scale to something like this. I will rotate the planet along the x-axis, then place it behind the can. This will depend on the direction in which you want the fluid source to start. I will go into side view and grab the plane to be in the middle of the can. This will help to splash water on both the top and bottom sides. Now we need to add the domain for the simulation. I will add the cube, position it and scale it to cover where we want fluid to appear. I will disable viewport visibility of the domain to wireframe in the object properties so we have a clear view of other objects. But before we start simulation, make sure the scale of your object is set to 1. You can apply the scale by pressing Ctrl plus A. Now let's start adding fluid to the object. Select the plane that is the source of fluid. Then go to the physics properties, then add fluid. Change the fluid type to flow, then the flow type to liquid. In the flow source, I will set the surface emission to 6. This will add more fluid to the scene. Enable initial velocity. The source value will be the source velocity passed to the fluid. Normal, this will be used to direct the fluid in the normal direction and velocity. This will be used if your object is aligned on a different axis. To see the normal direction, you can enable it here in the viewport overlays. Here you can see the blue color, which indicates the normal direction. Also, you can enable it while you are in edit mode in the mesh edit mode overlays and check one of these options to display the normal direction of the object. This will be useful if you set your object to align in a different direction. But for this object, I will use the initial Y because I want the fluid to flow along the Y axis. I will set the initial value to negative 15. Select the can in the physics properties, add fluid and set the fluid type to effector. Just leave everything default. Now select the domain, then add fluid. But for this one, change the fluid type to domain and the domain type to liquid. I will set the resolution to 128, but this will depend on your computer specifications. The higher the value, the more time it takes to bake the simulation. If you want to add slow motion at a specific frame, you can add a keyframe here in the time scale. I will disable all border collisions. This will avoid fluid collisions with the domain. Enable fluid mesh. In the cache setting, I will create a folder for the cache data. I will set the end frame to 100. Change the cache type to modular. This will bake every stage of the simulation separately. Also, enable is resumable. This allows the baking job to be resumed after pausing. I will add the same frame to the final frame of the playback to be 100. I changed the solid view of the domain to wire in the object properties to have a good view of the fluid during baking. Also, change the gravity of the fluid to zero in the field weights. Now, you can click Bake Data. This will take some time, depending on the computer's speed. After baking the data, you can preview the simulation. If you're satisfied with the result, now's a good time to bake the mesh. I will set the upres factor to 3. Try to use the small value because the larger value takes time to bake. Now click Bake Fluid Mesh. The bake is already finished and it's looking pretty nice. I will change the display type from wire to solid. Now let's add the material for the fluid. I will switch to the shading tab then add new material. Reduce the roughness to 0, increase the transmission to 1 and change the IOR value to 1.333. Go into the modifier, then add a smooth modifier. Add the repeat value to 3, then right click to shade smooth. Now you can add a camera and light. I have used the same scene of light and background that we set in the previous video. If you want to check it out, Click on the link in the description.
And that is it for this tutorial on creating a water splash simulation. I hope you have enjoyed it and learned something. If you do, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.